Hello friends, Namaskar. As you all may be aware that the provisions of section 11 and 12 of income tax law are the governing provisions for computing the total income of a public charitable trust or a public religious trust which is duly registered under section 12AA or 12AB of Income Tax Act 1961. Now while we compute the total income of a trust which is becoming a complex system since last few years because the government of India is putting up every year some new requirements on the trust so as to determine what will be their total income under the perspective of income tax law. A recent amendment in computing the total income of the SSC particularly in terms of calculating their application of total income is a very important one. And in my opinion this is applicable with effect from assessment year 22-23. So through this video I am trying to put up my views on this amendment which may be benefit for all. Now before I start discussing on the amendment my dear friends, let me first give you a brief idea on the role of method of accounting in computing total income of a trust or institution. Say you all may agree with me if I follow the principles of accounting that in the case of trust there may be expense side and there may be revenue or income side. So while there is revenue or income of a trust, it may include donations, it may include interest, it may include business income, it may include rentals which are earned by the trust. And similarly on the expense side, the trust may include various welfare related expenses, various contribution which trust may make to other welfare institutions and the trust may also incur certain expenditure which are due but might have not been paid. Now what happens that when the trust books its income, in the income side it has both the option it may book the income on accrual basis or it may book the income on cash basis. Similarly on the expenses side also it should have the equivalent option of either booking the expenses on accrual basis or booking the expenses on cash basis. But unfortunately the amendment which is the recent one is limiting the scope of claiming of expenses by the charitable institution or by the religious institution in the perspective of their total income computation under income tax law. So let me now bring before you what is this amendment and what will be the impact of this kind of amendment on computing total income of a charitable trust or a religious institution. Now here is the amendment before you which I am trying to put up that an explanation under the subsection 7 that is at the last of section 11 is inserted which is an explanation to the whole section. This explanation to section 11 is inserted by the finance act 2022 and applicable with effect from 1st of April 2022. In the notes on the clauses of the finance bill the point is deliberately mentioned that this amendment will be applicable from the assessment year 22-23 that is financial year 21-22. So as on date when I am preparing this video, if I assume that uh, form 10B of a public charitable or public religious institution being prepared or the ITR of a public charitable public religious institution being prepared, this becomes very important to take care of the applicability of this amendment. Now, what is the amendment? There is that explanation which says for the purpose of this section, any sum payable, payable by any trust or institution shall be considered as application of income in the previous year in which such sum is actually paid by. So the actual payment is the area where the thirst is given by the government and it is further written irrespective of the previous year in which the liability to pay such sum was incurred by the trust or institution according to the method of accounting regularly employed by. So as I said in the previous slide that the trust may be incurring expenditure on the accrual basis or on the cash basis. But the law has been specifically made to say maybe you are following accrual system of accounting as a trust for booking the expenses. We will allow you to claim the expenses only on actual payment basis and as and when the actual payment will be made at that time we will permit you to claim the relevant application of income in computing your final income as a trust for the purpose of income tax law. So herein what has happened that this kind of amendment may be treated to be similar to section 43b of income tax law which says that certain payments are allowed on actual payment basis. Now here the question is not of certain payment. In the case of a trust which is a charitable or religious institution the point is very clear. 
may be your a charitable institution, may be your religious institution, if you are registered under section 12AA or 12AB of income tax law, the income tax department will recognize an expense only when it is actually paid with effect from assessment year 22-23. Now somebody may ask me if that expenditure which is not paid and therefore now it cannot be claimed but it has become due which is now not to be treated as application of income. Can it be claimed as application of income in the year in which it will be actually paid? Yes sir, you can claim it in the year in which it will be actually paid. So irrespective of matter of accounting, the real payment is very important now from the perspective of this amendment which is made in the section 11 by the Finance Act 2022. Now to put up my point more specifically so that it can be understood by even a layman, I am trying to give an example that say a trust namely XYZ Foundation has received total voluntary donations of rupees 100 lakh for the year 21-22 and it has spent an amount of rupees 70 lakh towards actual payment on various welfare projects and booked an expense of rupees 10 lakh due to a contractor. However, actual payment whereof was not made in the financial year. Now, how much will be the total income of the XYZ Foundation for the assessment year 22-23? Now, say erstwhile provisions were like this. If 100 lakh was the total donation, say voluntary donation and say all these donations are non-anonymous and they are also voluntary but not corpus. Out of this 100, say 15 lakh rupees is allowed as claiming free accumulation by the trust. So remaining 85 trusts used to apply for public charitable, public religious purpose. Out of this 70 lakh rupees it has already paid on various welfare projects and 10 lakh it is booked as the expense which is due to a contractor. So at the end of the day or at the end of the year the trust is left with only rupees 5 lakh to be offered as total income and that too trust could save if it claims a deemed application, if it claims a accumulation kind of aspect. Now with this amendment what will happen? This 70 will be allowed because it is actually paid but this 10 will not be allowed. Now what will be the impact? The total income of the trust will accordingly enhance by 10 lakh rupees that is to become 15 lakh rupees. Now while the trust is applying for a deemed application or trust is applying for accumulation, it has to be very cautious that okay how much of the income is to be computed with reference to this amendment. So the amendment which I discuss with you is very important in the context of computing the final total income of the trust and through this example I hope now you have got the clarity how to give effect to this amendment. Now to sum up I can say that this is a very important and critical amendment and to my mind if you will ask me to speak frankly on that on one side the trust who are having big amount of FDs have the tedious deduction on such FDs and they are nowadays offering such income in their total income on accrual basis. On the other side government is saying that we will allow you to claim the expenses only on actual payment basis. So this is going both in the contrary direction. On one side the income being booked on the accrual basis yet it is not a force but usually to avoid the tedious related impacts carry forward and all the trust are booking the income nowadays on accrual basis. But on the other side, on expense part, the government has said that okay, we will allow you to claim application when the real amount is paid. It does not mean that the trust has to change the method of accounting. But it certainly means that while the trust is computing its total income, it has to be very cautious that the effect to this explanation is duly given not only in Form 10B but also in the ITR with the trust will be filing. So I hope you find this particular video useful to you. Thank you very much for being with me. Wishing you all the best. Jai.